Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Clash of Air. Guys, I just got back from California. I was out there hosting the Snapdragon Mobile Open Finals with Clash Bashing, and I got a crazy highlight war from that broadcast. So let's go check that out. But if you guys didn't know, the Snapdragon feeds into the World Championship of Clash of Clans. It is our next golden ticket awarding tournament. So the winner of the North American circuit, which also picks up a $50,000 prize, is going to play against the winner of the EU meta circuit and the winner of the Indian circuit, also sporting $50,000 apiece. So this is a big deal, guys, and we'll see who ultimately makes it through tonight and moves on to the next phase of the competition and then one step closer to that golden ticket to the Clash of Clans World Championship. Let's go check this war out. It is anybody's game, and this is one of those matchups that is for the spot to the challenge, and it is ready to go. So once again, passing it off to you guys. All right, let's get ready to kick into it. Here we go. The upper bracket last round here for Push and the Night Shift. The winner of this moves on to the Snapdragon Mobile Challenge. We have a dragon attack, a double clone dragon attack starting us right out of the gate here. We saw how effective that was in the previous war, and we'll see if it holds the same effectiveness into this one here, Bash. Two clones are going to look to spread these balloons out, and if these balloons stay up through the Town Hall, can get some massive value. Their scatter shots, their single target Infernos, does have to be aware of the enemy heroes. The RC should be dealt with, uh, maybe. Queen gets the RC down, and then with the Queen there, here comes that blimp. Clones are going to go down. Let's see how the spread works here, Eric. Looks like so far so good here, but he does hit a whole bunch of red bombs right as soon as he drops, but they all go to the balloons that we're going to die to the Town Hall Blast anyways. He's able to take out all the defense on the left side, the balloon surge across there, they'll grab out the sweeper, and they also are working on the CC. The scatter shot over on the left side there, or right side I sh uh, should say, end up standing. So we'll see what he does on the back side, but he got all the defensive heroes down, he got the major threats, he does still have these super minions running around, and that single Inferno, but I think overall he's looking pretty solid here, Bash. A lot of the base is down. Royal Champion's ability gets popped right there to get, help out with that scatter shot. This has that single, the last little bit of air defense. The Queen's going to go ahead and take care of those super minions. King tanking a little bit. Mm -hmm. Last few defense is going to fall, and this one's going to be a triple for Flame from Push. It's putting that foot on the accelerator, getting that momentum going early. This, oh, Eric, I can already tell. This is going to be a fun war to watch. Clone bombs getting the value needed. Exactly, and we know that when you pack a lot of stuff around that town hall, especially if it's like single infernos that the balloons can get a lot of value through, or they don't burn down those clone balloons very quickly, and you have a chance to take out multiple infernos before those balloons end up going down, it can really, really wipe out the core. It's a good call on a base like this, and when you are the first attacker, you have the least amount of time to plan. This is when you need to have somebody who can go in with a simple strategy and strike hard and fast like that and make sure that you wipe out that entire core. And I want to point out here that he went really heavy on the dragon runners in this one and light on the dragons which is contrary to what we normally see with this attack normally you see six to seven dragons three to four riders we had the opposite there and the really nice thing about this attack it is quick i believe that one clocked in at a minute 49 so if there is a lot of cleanup needed at the end maybe you just have a few straggling troops you're able to get through there that spread was beautiful using those sweepers to his advantage and flame puts push ahead three to nothing so it's going to be on the night shift to respond here that's exactly how you want to start off these wars and when you get the queen to survive as she works along the flank there and her unicorn stays intact there then she can come in late there get some healing you see her topping all the way back off there and uh, she did ultimately lose the unicorn there but it gave her just enough through to power through those super minions get that damage off of it and make sure they had enough to power through i feel like it is a bit risky to go in so dragon rider heavy because the defensive heroes and the defensive cc are not able to be taken down there by those dragon riders so the dragons have to end up picking those up and that could have gone bad there if any of those defensive heroes or the defensive cc end up causing problems we saw the super minions they did cause a bit of problems but he kept the, the queen well protected and that ultimately brought it back he got a little bit lucky also that his queen went inside to snipe out that rc because the mm. rc wasn't going to get taken down by right. anything so if the queen didn't get her down could have been a different story, but it's going to be on the night shift to respond after that first three star. And the clone bomb, we're see we didn't see it as much in that first split. We're seeing it a lot here tonight already. I mean, that's what, four or five attacks at least? Yeah, no, it's it's a good attack. It's strong, and honestly, if you don't know what else to do on a base, it's, there's no, there's no, there's nothing wrong with throwing that out there. That sounds uh, kind of a... A general strategy that is going to take out a large variety of bases and it is very powerful but we're going to switch away from that here we're going to see a campbell coming in from the night shift and he'll be 
or the Queen Charge Lalo. He's got that Flame Flame. They're going to start immediately down next to the Queen here. Gets a Baby Dragon next to it. The Queen taking all the air targeting defenses. And the Queen specifically also holding the tension of that Ground Expo so that that can't outrange the Flame Flinger as it makes its way across to the Eagle Artillery. But we'll also have to keep an eye out for Ground Skellies and Teslas in the area. It looks like we're still drawing out more Teslas with that Baby Dragon as it works its way across. And remember that Flame Flinger is going to have a lifespan of just around Ooh, two wait. minutes. Queen, do queen does have to pop her ability. Good shot there, Eric. But she gets through the scatter shot, gets through the enemy queen. And meanwhile, that Flinger is working through the top side, just looking to create that padding. Here comes that Royal Champion from the left hand side. Trying to force the queen into the center of the base here. He's got another two super wall breakers. He's Ooh. safe to drop the next. Oh, oh uh, Rocket Blues, Rocket uh, Blues, Rocket uh, Blues. Oh, oh, he's got the freeze. Oh. Saves the queen, and she didn't have her ability to protect herself. Wow. And sometimes even she's taken out through her ability with those. But after the world champion clears that left hand compartment, there's nothing for the wall breakers to target in that compartment. And the wall breakers drive him directly forward into the base there. And with the major threats of the queen there removed, she will take a round of Vigar Chiller Strikes. But the king should pick those up here in just a moment. And this queen has some brilliant access to get in here and get multiple multi-infernos down out of the core of the base. Great timing on the Lalo as the Flame Flinger just popped, opening up a Dragon Rider and some balloons. So pairing up the Lalo with those Clan Castle troops, we see the King just working towards the Town Hall. A lot going on throughout this base, but it's looking really strong. He even makes a couple buildings next to the Town Hall go invisible as the King pops his ability, so he doesn't have to fight his way to the storage. He made the storage invisible, so he skipped them and popped his ability directly into the Town Hall takedown. He's got the Ward ability with the Headhunters protected, coming from the right side. They're able to lock onto that Defensive World Champion, and it looks like they got her down. No. His, wait, is she up? No, no she's, she's still not. up. She didn't get. They didn't get caught there in the uh, Warden's ability, actually, Eric. He deployed them from the right side, so they stayed up. But Ooh. with the herd of balloons up, the Owls working on the Royal Champion might have enough here. It's going to be a close finish. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was a little bit close, a little bit close there. The Royal Champion, she could wreak havoc on the back end of the attack there. But a couple of uh, skeletons floating around here going to slow them up, but not slow them up enough to be able to stop this, which means it is going to be triple. They will match the triple, put up front push, and we will stay tied as we start off this war. That one was scary when those rocket loons come <laughs> zooming right. out of there with their ability. I was like, oh, no, that queen, but got the freeze down just in the nick of the time. And Wow, that was beautiful. That, just the plan on that, the flinger, the timing with the flinger. I don't know if you caught that, but when the flinger popped, the balloons and the dragon rider came out, the timing was amazing on that to pair up the Lalo. And we see it right here. Queen working through the middle. And <laughs> rocket loots gets the raise down, gets the freeze down just in time to keep them up. Meanwhile, the royal champion working through, creating that pathing for the king to go get the town hall, as you uh, shouted out there. Yeah, this queen got so much value, and you can't even even deploy the the queen's wall breakers to be able to punch into the core. They basically have the side compartments down. Otherwise, those wall breakers don't go all the way forward and still continue the queen charge after things did go wrong a little bit there. It wasn't a, it wasn't a major mistake there. That's the purpose of the queen ability to be able to protect herself. And if she doesn't need it to be able to take the town hall down directly, then that's a nice fail save to keep her alive. And it did indeed. So, but uh, keep an eye on these uh, headhunters if we have enough time to watch all the way back to the headhunters going in to get that defensive road champion down because those headhunters could have ended up screwing him over there if they left that Royal Champion up and she didn't ultimately go down and she'd end up picking off a lot more than that. But that Electric Owl did some work and I ended up taking her out there and that's a nice backup plan. It's one thing that Town 14 can do that other Town levels cannot when you leave a defensive hero like that. Yeah, the Headhunters just kind of came in in an awkward spot, a little bit more like on the side flank there of right. the Warden so they didn't get quite caught in that ain't, uh, the Warden ability. But there's yeah. a reason for that. Yeah. You don't want to put the Headhunters to target onto the King so you have to put them off to the side there so that they don't go to the King, they go to the Royal Champion directly. So he missed the angle just slightly. Maybe they got a, their primary target, but they weren't able to get it down. But what, what <laughs> on earth is this? Tani Zuko, we've got Yeti Super Archers and Bats. This could be really interesting. I've been seeing a lot of people go in with the Yetis and Super Wizards rather than Super Archers, but he's gonna blanket that whole side of the base there in Wall Breakers and drive in with the Yetis and Super Archers and just blanket that entire top quadrant of the base. If he could keep these super archers behind the Yetis tanking, 
they can do some massive damage. They have a longer range of regular archers, and they can get some damage down. We see the yetis and everything kind of frozen up there from the ice golem out of the clan castle, but making the way into the town hall here with that log launcher. Ooh. Danny's got a nice push as everything works to the outside. Uh oh, oh, interesting clan castle choice. Yeah, he's got the. He's got the Road Champion that's uh, deep in the middle of the base there. She's going to pop her building at the defensive uh, scatter shot down and maybe sets up that right side to be able to have these bath sweeps with the come. Wizard Tower. But there's still that multi-inferno in the middle of the base there. He definitely would have preferred that everything went to the middle. But it also, it's almost a, a good thing that they didn't go through and uh, get hit by that Town Hall Poison because it keeps the overall pack at a higher HP. And now they're wrapping through. He's got the bath sweeping through. Hold up, Batch. This still has a pretty solid chance here. Got to get through this multi-target Inferno. Still has two free spell. First one gets deployed. And then after that, the only splash damage is going to be that Wizard Tower. Of course, oh. the Eagle Art slowing the locks on. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh no. Freeze it, freeze it, freeze it. Okay. He's, no, he's, oh. he's going to dodge it. He dodged oh. the Eagle Artillery strikes there. Oh. But he's still moving. He's got some damage into the single fur. The single fur drops and maybe Maybe something else can move through, but it's starting to dwindle out a little bit here as his heroes are getting taken out. But that queen, she's still hanging on here, Bash. The single inferno is a major threat. He's got a lot of time left here. Still has Unicorn up. Should be able to push this one towards 90%. She's going to go. Oh, no. She's going Leroy oh, Jenkins at the single. That's oh. good. No, that's good. He needs to get that single down. I believe the single is already weakened up heavily by the bat. So if he gets the single down, there's no more threats down there. He has the Come Unicorn. On. Everybody Come tags on. team it. And get he's it. got a tower go. with the queen still up. And he's also going to get some damage to the outside. It's a super archers break to the right he's got a minute but he's losing time here as a super archer ends up hitting the spring trap this is a wild ride a roller coaster of attack here from Danny Zuko but he still has a chance to pull through he needs the queen to break to the left oh that's gonna cost him some time no clean up left it's just the queen the warden and the owl and they're gonna have to backtrack all the way back here at 40 seconds it's gonna be it's still gonna be tight I just don't know if he's going to have enough to get all the way back through that cannon. Health isn't an issue. Come on, Danny. Push him through here. Oh, man. A little unlucky. The archers went down. Eric, does he have the time? 26 seconds. Oh, it's going to be close here. I don't know. I want to say no, but I think he still <laughs> might have a chance it's at so it. It's so close. If, if any of these defenses are weakened up or any of these buildings are weakened up, he still might be able to pull through in time here, but he's... Oh, he's got to move faster than this. He's got to move faster. Oh, he's still 10 seconds, Bash! Come I on. think he's going to go the Come distance! On. Come on, go, Danny! Go. He's got go. it! Oh, baby, it's a triple! Let's go. And push Les triple with the Super Archers <laughs> and the Yetis. That was oh. wild. How did that three-star Danny? I thought you were doomed when your queen went the other way. Beautiful use of everything. Nice patience. Oh, I thought the bats were going to get blown up here by the eagle they dodged it yeah they, they got <laughs> the, the freeze didn't allow the eagle to retarget on there and just enough to barely get through here. oh my goodness that was crazy <laughs> oh yeah, you don't get much closer than that, guys. You don't get much closer than that. And then the queen, she went the wrong. I thought she needed to break off to the left side to start clearing the trash from the left side there to be able to have a chance. But there's no time to take a break here, guys. We're diving right into Puma from the night shift, and they're going to have to get a triple to match it if they want to stay pace with Push This War. And we got a Lalo. We got heroes. It looks like we got a little bit of a hero dive happening here early. I'm trying to just kind of evaluate what's going on here, and it just looks like it's going to be a hero dive Lalo here. Three Lava Hounds, got the heroes just working all along this right hand, our bottom right hand side, trying to get to the town hall, push or push through and make it, uh, make it destroyed. Yeah, that's, yeah, that, that's, that, a good, that's a word. That's a good thing to do to it, I think. <laughs> but it, he is going to get the king to hold the tension of that Lava Hound as he breaks off to that far left side of the base there. A headhunter is chasing him down there, but the headhunter is not onto his queen. His queen will hold onto her ability all the way up until she engages that town hall. She'll be able to take that town hall down and then deal with that headhunter. And that makes so his warden can deploy without any threats there when he's ready to go in. But he did end up taking out three most or almost three compartments there. The minion down south will finish off that cannon and the queen will finish off these pups. But we'll see if that expo goes down one way or another. He's got that area of the base there handled. And he'll uh, get us. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> he needs the. He's trying to get the defensive road champion dealt with there first, and he hasn't even deployed his warden yet. What? Okay, there we go. Okay, all right, all right. He's got under control here. I think he's okay. Yeah, yeah. Could have maybe saved the queen a little bit there if he poisoned those pups just a little bit earlier. Uh, the stone slammer does get popped by that single, however. Plenty of troops remaining. We still got plenty of spell support as well. This has got a strong start to the attack. Can Puma, Puma work his way through? the back end of this base with those three Inferno Towers and the Eagle Artillery still standing. 
I like that the sweeper is negating the single inferno beams there by resetting the beam, protecting that dragon runner that steps all the way in there, locks onto it now. And Wall is tanking the expo and the single. He's got the minions and archers chipping with the right side, but they don't take that down. And that's going to make a miss to expo too. But the balloons are making their way back into the core of the base. They're sweeping him, not come back, but he has the haste. And there goes some traps. Can he stop that from going down? I think he's got it under control here. He's got so many balloons, and he'll coast his way into this last. Expo and he will get the triple. So Night Shift matches them blow for blow, and this is a shootout here, Bash. That was crushed. Beautiful plan of attack here. You love to see the heroes being taken advantage of and getting as much value as possible. There wasn't really much support with them. We did have an ice golem, a little bit, you know, just a little bit of support. Mm -hmm. But the heroes did most of the heavy lifting to clear out that whole bottom three compartments. And Puma's rewarded with an absolutely crushed three star. Yeah, it was a a lot of balloons moving to the top of the base here when it, he got through that right side with the scatter shot and the defensive royal champion was, but having this much force with the ward ability still intact here and still has hounds intact, he definitely sets this up here, but uh, <laughs> I was worried when that uh, Dragon Runner went down, but he, he added so many blues over on the side, there wasn't even a problem. If those were multi-infernos, then maybe it would have been another story, because then he would have got these balloons burned up, but these single inferno bases, you see them, they're good against stopping the dragon attacks there, but every time you make something stronger against the Lalo, it tends to make it weaker to dragons and vice versa. So you're playing a, you're playing a rock, paper, scissors kind of there sometimes and it can be difficult to decide what to go in with. Yeah, rock, paper, scissors, these guys are rock, paper, scissors. They're both they're just, just throwing they're rocks. Just, they're just rock. Throwing rock. <laughs> Everybody's throwing rock <laughs> and smashing bases, exactly. This is what we <laughs> love to see, though. Both teams throwing up two, three stars apiece. We'll have to see if Push can keep it up. Can we Can we see another three star attack from Push? Or will they should finally get that big defense we're looking for? Oh, this is exciting, Eric. What a night of wars we have. Yeah, and this is like the most important war here, potentially, because if they lose this, they have to fight their way back out of the lower bracket. And obviously that is with its own set of challenges there. So you don't want to you don't want to push and risk. You don't want to attempt fate by going down to that lower bracket. You got to win it right here. We got John coming in from push and we're seeing another one. Oh, is this a blizzard? It's a it's a like blizzard it looks here. like a blizzard into Hydra here, and he's going after the town hall directly, and he makes it all the way in to be able to access it here, Bash. One of my favorite attacks right now in the game, if you can get set up the value, get the town hall down, your heroes can get so much to set up the pathing for the Hydra, usually running the king and queen uh, to set the path for the Hydra to move in. But use uh, it looked like a, a wall breaker. Is that just open? Nah, that's just open there. So didn't get much more value from the Wizards, but here come that King and Queen and the Hydra to support from that three o'clock position. Absolutely, going after the Eagle Artillery is his priority here. Also going after any remaining standing heroes. Uh, the Royal Champions already weakened up heavily. The Queen was taken down by the shots there through the Town Hall by the Super Wizards. And he's honestly off to a very, very strong initial setup for this attack. And he just needs to keep the dragons together here. But the heroes coming at the top quadrant there will be in charge of trying to correct the path. There's one dragon rider that is next to the king and the queen there going to the scatter shot and it's staying protected. He used the spells to make sure that it survived there. And that going down is going to finish kind of the funnel here and keep everything off to the right side. And all those dragons are staying heavily grouped up. He's got the CC pull, and it looks like it is a couple of ice golems, so that will stall up his heroes up at the top of the base here, Bash. That rider's still going, getting massive value. We still have plenty of dragons and a couple riders still remaining at the bottom, being supported with that royal champion. They're going to clean up behind. This is looking really strong here for John. Doesn't have too many high priority defenses left. That rider's that rider up top got so much. It got a scatter, <laughs> just got the multi down. Uh, royal champion's ability goes off, and it's looking like we have another three star response for push yeah this is crushed this is absolutely crushed here and what a shootout this is a good war here and with this much on the line these guys are absolutely killing it that is out of 10 attacks there we have nothing but triples here this war as uh, these teams are just going ham on them and back and forth the creativity we're seeing some fun attacks we're seeing some a little bit of different attacks but these clans know what it takes. They know. They don't want to play the rest of the day, Eric. Let's just win this war and be done. Lay it all out on the table and just see if you can just finish your day in this war. Would you say that they're pushing through some bases? Oh! <laughs> uh, I mean, honestly, yes. I would say that because <laughs> we, we saw the importance. Happy Endings was the number one seed, got eliminated. You don't want to risk going down and playing an elimination match. Just go and qualify in this matchup right here. And push is showing 
they they want that spot hard, but night shift also. I mean, this is this is good. This is fun. Well, what's interesting is Push has already beat their their average record for the number right. of three stars. So anything on top of this is just ice on the kick to just bolster their their or pad their numbers, I guess, as they get ready for a challenge if they can make it through. So we'll we'll see what happens there. But he was able to push through. Because he's <laughs> get <laughs> oh, oh, oh man, I'm I'm pretty funny. But we got <laughs> All right. Well we got the next attack here shortly from the night shift and we'll see if they can respawn here, Bash. Oh the dad jokes are killing me. The puns are too good. Oh it's it's great. But it's real could this be a war where we see one slip up cost a team? I I mean it's looking it, like that, right? It's definitely they're on track. They're definitely putting up some really good numbers here to start off, but we're still early in the war here. Like we're only at the halfway point here. We've only seen two attacks out of the night shift, and push has already shown what they can do here, and we'll see what happens with their last attackers, but night shift is really gonna have to push hard here to maintain pace with them. Oh boy. Uh, night shift, I'm so sorry. Eric already casting doubt. Eric does oh I'm so sorry guys. Like I don't doubt him. I don't doubt him. I know what they can do here. They got so many good players. And with Stone coming in for their third attack here, they are in good hands. We've got the double clone, a little bit of lightning that he can use to take out a sweeper. He's already started with a couple sneak goblins that he can go form out some funnels here, drive in his heroes in through the top of the base, get that eagle artillery out of the way early as we commonly see is so important for these dragon attacks. But we also see those open corners that the heroes are trying to take advantage of. Of, and the defender takes advantage of them as well by throwing down that that spring, spring trap up in the top corner to catch that ice golem. He'll drive his queen back into the base there and look how they swung off to the left side of that compartment first. And that makes the queen reaches the wall and tightens the pathing for the dragons, but that doesn't leave a much funneling on the outside edge of the base there. Great use of that wall breaker to push the queen and also use the lightning spells to zap off that sweeper so the balloons and the blimp will have a straight path to the town hall. And remember, we'll see the rage with those clone spells be used right at the town hall to try to get some of these defenses down. Headhunters out of the clan castle. I see some archers there, so odds are there's a hound remaining. Here we go. There's the balloon spread. Town hall falls nice. and beautiful split. Beautiful. Wow. That it was good. Had that a dragon in there as well. Absolutely. The dragon will help fight off some of these archers that are still floating around in the middle of the base there unless it just dies it did but <laughs> <laughs> we're not gonna worry about that he got good value out of the blimp there and there are no threats for the royal champion left on the back side of the base there he did he ever even pull the lava hound i don't think I he don't did think so he was able to destroy the cc with that dragon i believe before it went down and that makes so the lava hound inside dies with the cc building itself which having that queen go to the middle of the base there she would have ended up pulling it but now this royal champion just needs to survive oh maybe maybe he's not quite out of this yet here yeah. There's a lot of trash. There are a lot of dragons, though. There's, yeah, there's a lot of dragons. Four dragons plus a warden. I think he's got it with only the archer tower. Unless yeah. there's a seven seat. Oh, oh there's one seat. <laughs> oh, no, here we go. Oh, it begins. Oh, it begins. Oh, it begins. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, uh, if there's three more or four more seeking gear mines hidden away here, I think uh, Stone's going to be fine. Oh. Plenty of dragons to clean up. Plenty with the warden. Did lose a dragon right there. Yeah, yeah But the yeah. archer tower is in this next dragon site. Yeah, you got it. And <laughs> Stone throwing rock again for another triple. This rock paper scissors stalemate continues in this matchup. Somebody, somebody did throw paper eventually. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> but, uh, a miss may come. It may not come, uh, and only time will tell here. But somebody's in, no. gonna get him packing down to the lower bracket here. And it's sad to see somebody named Eric get in a taken out there. It's a, that's a strike to my heart right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's sad to see, like, this war has been incredible so far. Six attacks in, perfect from both these teams. We had one attack that was kind of close with the Yeti Super Archer attack. Um, that was just a time thing. It wasn't even like it was a fail. It was just more of a time thing. So it's sad to see that one of these attacks, one of these clans are going to have to go play again, but that's the way that esports work. Look at the spread from these balloons and that dragon out of there. Love to see it. Yeah, I want to see how we ended up destroying the CC. It was the dragon, the dragon that came out of the blimp there, and it didn't even finish it off there. It was actually the balloon striking at the defensive warden that ended up destroying the CC and the hound that was contained within. So that was right before the queen stepped into the range there. So a little bit of a lucky break on that one. <laughs> and he didn't have to fight off that hound on the backside with the hound when he had so little, he only had a couple dragons and the warden there still worked on the backside. That could have slowed them down enough and maybe provided some distraction. It's hard to say, yeah. but uh, Hound is always better left inside of the CC if you can all help it when you're going with those full air attacks. Yeah, especially those dragons. I mean, the, we've seen that numerous times this war where it just came in clutch. I mean, we've even been confused. Clay Castle's gotten pulled and we don't even see it because the <laughs> dragons are so strong. But mm -hmm. you're right. 
if that hound gets pulled there, it might have been closer. Might have forced the queen's ability a little bit earlier. Might have forced those dragons, you know, to clean up a little bit. Yeah. But it didn't. So here we are. So nine to nine after three attacks. It's going to be on push next, throwing that next rock, paper, scissors. Rock. <laughs> <laughs> Will we see a rock? <laughs> Will we see paper? Let's see as we got champ coming in with a three, a triple clone bomb Hydra here. Eight dragons, eight loons, and four riders. And it looks like he's gonna be facing both of the sweepers on his way into the base here. Uh, risky potentially move here. We'll see if he can nuke out that town hall and grab out both of these infernos. There are a lot of ground expos in the area, but he's able to keep his distance from them for his heroes. But he does go to very, very early queen ability. She picked up some damage early. Oh! And oh, 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 oh! oh! They're okay, cloned, they're cloned. he's got the freeze too. He invested, <laughs> he saw that the clones potentially were gonna miss there, but they eventually spawn out those balloons and he's able to clear out the majority of the core of the base. And he even has some clones supporting to get the air defense down on the right side with the drag riders over there, which will help him power into that scatter shot over there. And also, I guess the CC pull, it's a triple ice golem. I mean, I guess it's either hound or triple ice golem, one way or another, they're dealt with the same here, but they do ultimately stall up your heroes into the backside. And, prevent the Royal Champion and or the Queen King from moving through smoothly through that area of the base. And we see that Expo chipping away at the Lassie and then he'll switch over. Oh, no, it goes to the Dragon. He's got some good support here. He's honestly looking pretty strong here, Bash. Eric, where'd this base go? It's gone. Yeah. What, 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 like, you, I, I wanted to say, you know, those, going into two sweepers could be okay because, it, you know, it might push the balloons out of the poison, but it didn't matter. Once you got that third clone out, you don't want to waste clone spots. I mean, those are three spell spots each. But it didn't matter. Once he got those balloons cloned, got the town hall down, this base was smashed. It didn't stand a chance. Beautiful read. You're right. Champs throwing rock. They're right back at it. Oh, wow, this this war is insane right now. And another beautiful clone bomb hydra. Are we seeing the resurgence of the clone bomb right before our eyes? Guys, take notes. This is a really strong meta attack right now. Also works really well in Legends. Must note that. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's largely because these compact core, single inferno, anti two star bases. These bases are specifically vulnerable to this attack. So it's a, it's a common base there because you think that the dragons might be vulnerable or you can maybe stop a queen charge with the single infernos around the town hall or something like that. But if you have the clones themselves come out there and just spawn in a barrage of blues to take those single infernos out, then it just shuts it down. And if you can nuke out the core, then all you have is a small perimeter that you need to wrap your way through. And your Royal Champion tends to be able to support there and get your way through that. So very, very nicely done here from Champ. And that's four on the board here for Push. They still aren't out of this yet, though. They could literally go all the way perfect and still not guarantee that they make this win because the night shift is hot on their tail here. And I mean, if you don't know how esports works, it's stars, percent, and then fastest attack. And they did have that slower Yeti super archer attack. I mean, it's hard to say because right. these dragon attacks are so quick. We saw like a minute 49. We're seeing these clock in right about two minutes, give or take a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see. I mean, three attacks, it's still a lot. Anything can happen here, but this, this is what we like to see, guys. This is... This is really fun. Right, but the, the opening attack for the other side was that Queen Charge Lalo that also ended up using up a lot of time. Not True. quite as much, so I mean, this really still could be a very, very close war on time, and we'll ultimately see if it comes to that. But right now, they just need to focus on getting these triples here. They need to keep this triple train rolling. And right now, we're at seven out of 10 triples as cool. they are just unleashing on each other. You guys, throwing rock. <laughs> throw, throw, <laughs> you guys got to be hype in the chat for a war like this. After our first war was decided by 1%, this war is just back and forth, this nonstop action, beautiful attacks, beautiful execution. This clone bomb is just nuts to see. Like, okay, look, I have got to make a confession. Guys, my, my clone bomb never works like that. My balloons just all cave in and blow up with the town hall. <laughs> How are these guys getting that spread? <sighs> I mean, yeah, that that's what happens uh, if you don't actually get the clone spells spread out to get the blues to spawn in better spots there. It's, it's it's an art. It's an art. It really is. It's not just fam always. It's just a matter of getting the value out of those clones. But here we go. Chase the ace from the night shift. Going to put the dragons away and go in with the Sui hero Lalo using the was a skeleton spell to distract a lot of the defenses around that queen. But he finds a big, big test of farm there. 
wasn't able to get through. The defensive king, I believe, was right there. Yeah, the headhunters got him through that. And the queen is going to survive with her ability attack there. So she can now make her way in and go get this town hall down. Hopefully she paths in there. Oh, don't go to the Come left. On, don't go to the left. Don't go to the left, Queen. Come RC, on. get that mortar oh, down. Okay. Oh, yeah. pops his RC ability right before the Queen takes the turn, and that forces her into the Town Hall compartment. Great read by Chase. Knowing that if that mortar was up, the Queen could walk on him, uses that Royal Champion's ability to push it down. Queen will fall victim to the Town Hall poison, but look at the value. We get three compartments taken out, and here comes the Clan Castle. We see a bunch of archers, and then finally that Lava Hound, which the Lava Hound is not a huge threat to the Lalo if it stays unpopped. He's gonna try to get this expo down before he switches over to the Hound, and he does. He leaves the scatter shot up, so the King did fall short of the value that he was looking for there, but with one sweeper down, he's kind of in a tough spot here. This is not gonna be an easy Lalo. Scatter shot backside, he's got that multi that did not go down either. Definitely wanted more value to the King and the Royal Champion there that he did not get, but he will make his priority the defensive Queen, and he'll put the Warden deployed right next to her with the Freeze and the Headhunters to go in there and take her down, but holds on to the Warden ability for a little a little bit deeper. It's a good time to pop it right about now. He doesn't. Trying to get more balloons inside of that, but he's losing balloons in the process, and there's gonna be Ooh. less balloons to protect there if he doesn't get it down. There it is. There is that ward ability. He'll get the first multi down and gets knocked towards the eagle, and he's got the heal for the other multi inferno. It's still gonna be an uphill battle here because he's gonna be approaching that sweeper late. That sweeper pushing those balloons away from the multi target inferno. We get that scatter shot. This is a tough finish. Oh no, Eric. They might have. Oh no. I don't want to say it, but this is looking like a tough finish for Chase the Ace. They might have made that one slip up that we were speaking of. A few balloons left. We got the Warden working. I don't go. Uh, he still has a little, oh, there goes the Dragon Rider. <laughs> oh, right, as I, right as I start to Eric, maybe. Okay, I need, I, need, I need to stop talking. I need to, I need to just let this Blues do their thing, but no, it's not going to make a difference here, Vash. They're going to go down one way or another. Uh, no power of, uh, or no, no amount of Jinx was able to turn that around after the heroes fell short. That Lava Hound on defense, that's when the Lava Hound becomes incredibly valued to stop the value of the heroes like that, where the poisons can't really do much about it. But he does have the Warden reaching back across the base here. So even though this Warden is ultimately going to go down, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, he's going to go down. <laughs> it's going to be a 96%. So it's the first miss of the war, but it still puts the bar high for the last attacker from Bush. Danny Zuko threw paper on that volley. <laughs> Got the defense they need. It's the Lava Hound. The Lava Hound is the rock. <laughs> That's what it is. I figured it out. <laughs> but as you said, it's a 96%. So if push slips up on this next attack, it could still be won by uh, the night ship. This is still anyone's war. It's going to come down to these final two attacks. You want to get a three star here and just secure that victory. However, if you fall short, you get 95% even. Think about that. A 95% fail could lose you the war. That That's just ridiculous. I mean, yeah, they put up all triples all the way through. They've literally only left four buildings. That's literally all that's been left on the board here. This entire war is four buildings could determine who moves on to challenge here. And, and I'm nervous. I'm nervous here, Eric. I'm not I gonna... am too. It's Eric. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Poor fella. Oh. All right, look at this. We got four clones. Hey, I have my moments. Maybe he does too. Let's see if we make it happen here as it comes with the quadruple clone Hydra attack here. He's going to nuke out the entirety of the core here with all of his spells here. He has no rage for the dragons. Everything will be invested to the clones. He needs oh, to get a good baby. spread. He makes them into a oh, line. They baby. reach all the way to the backside of the base there. And he'll pick up the air defense there as well. Takes the town hall and takes everything around it. Wow. Good value, but he's not out of this yet, Bash. Still a lot remaining. Still has to deal with the enemy queen. The enemy royal champion has that multi-target in front of with a single protector by the king on the backside. Has a herd of troops over here on the right side. We got that Hydra moving through. Royal Champion picking things up. These dragons are gonna go lonesome. Three dragons over to the Queen. That's gonna kind of put them out to dry. This could be a tight finish here for Eric. Yeah, he's got the single inferno on the backside there with the multi and the warden statue, which has a ability to deal with a lot of different variety of troops coming at it and we have these Dragon Riders making their approach now. Single Inferno locks on against the defensive warden down quickly. Get access into the multi Inferno. Still moving strong here. Got a lot of Dragon Riders, but they are starting oh. to get low on HP. And he's got traps going off here. He's going to lose that Dragon Rider onto that Single Inferno. I think that forces the warden to change targets. If he doesn't get it down in time, oh. he does. He catches it right before that Dragon drops. And the warden is able to stay on target and take it out. And ladies and gentlemen, Push 
has the perfect war here. Absolutely crazy. And that is going to send him on to the Snapdragon Mobile Challenge. 15 stars was what they needed to get it done. Didn't want to leave anything up to chance. They just kept throwing that rock and got it done. Eric staying with this attack. Beautiful use of the Queen ability to get through the enemy king. Make sure she stayed up. And there we go, guys. Our first perfect war of the night qualifies the team, the push team, for the mobile challenge. After taking down our number one seed, moving into the Snapdragon Mobile Open today. This is a big win for them. They took out Happy Endings, they take out Nice Shit. Those are the two teams that I would have considered our top teams. They just mowed right through them. And with 15 stars on the board, that is a huge, huge pickup, eliminating any chance for the Nice Shit to make a comeback. We'll still see their last attack coming in here and we'll cheer them on and we'll let them get prepped for their next match because now they're gonna be moving down to that lower bracket and we'll see what they can do down there and see if they can still secure one of the other seats for challenge because there's still another two to be de delivered in the bottom of the bracket there. So like they still could go down there, they could win in that bracket when they arrive after the other teams there collapsed the bracket because they did make it all the way up to this round. So getting knocked down will still put them in a good spot there. If they win that one, win one more, they can still make it through. So their chances are still alive and well. And after what we've seen here from them tonight, we obviously they can score. They can put up the big numbers. I mean, they, they could potentially put up 14 mm -hmm. with 99%. Uh, that, that, that'll be <laughs> such a, like, oh, that's a heartbreaker. But you, you have to respect the effort from Push. They came out, they rubbed the bases, they got a little bit creative. That, that super archer yeti attack. I know, it was awesome. <laughs> oh, it was so cool, but man, that... It's stressful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, such a fun attack. But these yeti bombs, the, not the yeti bombs, excuse me, the clone bombs with the hydra, just getting through these bases, exploding. We saw all the spells committed to that last clone bomb. Four mm -hmm. clones and just decimated that whole core. It's all these anti two star bases, these compact core bases. They are just identifying what maybe they thought might be a weakness for them. And they found they have their all the bases are fairly similar, honestly. So I'm not surprised to see the same strategy just leveling them over and over and over here. So they're able to just take out their their primary weapon and just unleash and they're able they able to get all the way to challenge here. So here we go. We got our last attack of the war. Granny Clasher will come in to close it out. No chance to move on. And they'll go down to the lower bracket, but we'll see if he can make it happen with one of my personal favorite strategies. This one is the Sneaky Bat Rider, where the Sneaky Goblins will go in and clear the storages around the Town Hall. He can take that Town Hall down with the Sneaky Goblins and use that invisibility to protect them. Just needs to test for traps there, then he's in the Sneaky Goblins, then he needs to put the invisibility to cover the Sneaky Goblins, but not the Town Hall itself, so they take it out. And now if he can get the majority of the splash damage out of the way here with a Strike Squad with his heroes, with the Log Launcher supporting, and then the Dragon Riders, he will be able to have the bat sweep around and take the rest. So we'll see what he can do here. But he's got to push all the way to those multi infernos in the middle as his primary targets. And with the, everything starting opposite of where that town hall was, doesn't even have to worry about that poison as it's already dissipated. And that's the big value from being able to use those sneaky goblins to get it down. You take away one of the most important defenses on the base. Like here we go. Hero's going to work in towards the middle. That log launcher will open everything up and get amazing value and looking to just clear out as much of the splash as Eric mentioned so those bats can sweep through here and just finish off this base. Absolutely. The king trying to get to the defensive row champion. He doesn't want any part of that, but the headhunters go in there and get her down. He will need some support down south to actually, ah, I don't know what his king's gonna do. This king, where is this king going? He's taking the warden with him. He swings all the way to the outside, which leaves the center group a little bit of a hot spot there. The queen also oh. ends up going south. She goes back to the core, but now she's gonna get stuck on that lava hound and she has no more ability to protect herself. The warden comes back. What on earth is this attack here? What is going on? The troops are going all over the place here as they try to make their way through. All over indeed. The rider's going to get down that scatter from that right-hand side. But lots of splash defense is still up. King's got his ability pops right there. Mm -hmm. Looking like we might see a bat bomb on the scatter shot as nothing is working towards there. But it does have to deal with the multi and the wizard towers with uh, four freezes. This is going to be a tough finish. A lot of splash damage up. Mm -hmm. There we go. Here comes the bat bomb. Yeah, unfortunately, the bat bomb has to deploy 
in the range of the multi-inferno. He doesn't really have a choice. He needs to get those down off the initial push. But the heroes not cooperating. The king dragging the warden out. The king going for a walk. They're not supporting the queen tanking for the middle of the base there. But he, if he gets this multi down, he oh, that multi nope. <laughs> rips nope. those bass to shreds there. Six beams and instantly transferring from the troop to troop there. Makes so those bat swarms just get melted. It is going to be a defense, but it's all for nothing regardless. If they did have that opportunity, though, you get to play that what if, and you see that the base was going to be strong enough. So one way or another, a decisive offensive and defensive win here for Push, and they definitely earned their spot for the Snapdragon Mobile Challenge. That is a wrap for us here in our Clash of Clans Snapdragon Mobile Open Finals. That means Push, Flaming Turkeys, No Chance Ice, and Omnipotence will join War and Glory, Empire Gaming, Chasmac, and Fuzzy Wuzzy as our eight teams moving on to the challenge. It's going to be a tough competition to be sure, so make sure you do not miss it. Of course, we have to give a huge thanks to our sponsors, Snapdragon Elite Gaming, Monster Energy, DHL, and the U.S. Air Force. On behalf of myself, my fellow co-casters, and everyone here behind the scenes at ESL Studios, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you at the challenge.